know what we're dealing with. Okay, so good. We can't really see comments, I don't think, but at least they can see us. <laughs> at least they can see us, right? So we're going to welcome you by Periscope. We've already welcomed uh, live stream Facebook. We'll welcome you by Periscope. Now, I can't see your comments because we have a... Um, hi, is that Tierra? Hi, Tierra. I think that's you. <laughs> okay, I can't see your comments, guys, but we promise you we're, we're sorry. engaged. Um, we'll wait a few more minutes to allow people to arrive and... Uh, I want you just to stay with us and enjoy worship as we get started and people begin to filter in. Yes. And we thank you all for joining us. And this is Paula McGay for those of you who are on my Periscope. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so we're really excited. So stay with us and invite followers if you'd like. Yes, please invite your friends to join us online. We're super excited about Equip, Empower, and uh, Energize. And, you know, our focus is to make sure that you have the tools and the things that you need in order to become better this year. You know, spring is coming, so we're all about that change and renewing and refreshing our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. So uh, we're just super excited. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. So I guess those of you who don't know, um, we are our first um, round of devotions or discussions is going to be from uh, Joyce Myers, The Confident Woman. I have to say I was really ministered to, uh, there's the book right there, so if you want to join and keep, you know, joining with us, please do go out and you can, you can purchase the book um, so that you can keep up with what we're talking about. I recommend this book highly for any woman who's wanting to do anything. I mean, any woman, not even wanting to, just want to know more about yourself, wanting to be more comfortable in your skin, wanting to love yourself more. Yes, absolutely. I know just the first chapter is so full of nuggets. Anisha was sharing with me that she got a ton of just aha moments and things that she wants to share with you today. And I can't wait to hear, <laughs> hear those nuggets. But, you know, all of us deal with confidence at one point in time in our lives. And, you know, even the person who's out there doing it and they're successful, they're still, every once in a while, that little twinge of, uh, I don't know, am I, am I enough? Am I good enough? Or, do I have what it takes? So Joyce is going to walk us through how to be uh, become more confident. And give me hearts if you guys can hear us. I just want to make sure you guys can hear us. Give me hearts if you can hear us. Um, mother of fall. I can't really see your handles very good, but please give me, if you can hear us, please give me hearts. And you, maybe you guys can. Hi, Les and Mary. Hey, Tanya. Yay. Okay, Welcome you can hear Karen. us. Hearts. Okay. Les and Mary Thomas. Yeah, Welcome. Tanya Cooper's on. Can, can see or hear. Oh, they can't. You can see or hear anything. Are you saying you can't? Okay, you can. Tanya, are you saying you can hear us and see us or you can't? I'm sorry, Periscope, I'm talking to Facebook Live people too. <laughs> okay, right, but are you, can you hear us, Tanya? If you can hear us, just indicate yes in your comments or give a thumbs up or something so that we know that you can hear us. Okay, so they can hear us live, loud and clear on, uh, on Periscope, they said. Awesome. Great. Yay. That's good, you know, because the whole purpose is so that you can hear. <laughs> All right. That would be crazy if you, if you couldn't. But, uh, you know what, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. For those of you who have already joined us, we don't want to, you know, penalize you for the people that aren't here. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to ask uh, if Shannon would come and um, adjust our volume so that we can, um, you know, turn the music down. And we're going to pray because I believe the most important part of anything that we do is to give acknowledgement to God and just to, to ask him to bless our efforts. So we're going to go ahead and, and get started with that. Thank you, Miss Shannon. You're welcome. All right. Okay. Go ahead and pray. And then I'll, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to allow Miss Anisha if she has okay. anything she wants to add. Lord God, first of all, we just honor you and we thank you, Lord, for this time of fellowship, God. We, we give this to you, God. We know this is your idea. We know that it's your heart to touch people. Lord, we know that you want people's lives to be changed so that they can go out and change others' lives, God. And we just thank you, Lord God, that the impact of what we're doing today is going to be felt generations from now, oh God. I pray for every woman and every man that is joining us, Lord God, online and those that are on their way to join us live, God. We ask and pray that your anointing would flow through us, God, to your people. We ask that lives will be changed, healed, mended, broken, God. I mean, broken lives will be mended, God, and that people will be set free and delivered, God, from things that they may be dealing with. God, we just seal this with the blood of Jesus, and we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Anything you want to add? I think we're good. I think, <laughs> I think you're good. I could go in, but I'll let all of you in there. <laughs> She's like, we're just going to park it right there. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I wanted to talk 
first of all about the the um, the premise and then the frequency of these uh, Bible study discussion groups. We're going to do this every other week. And what, what our idea and our goal was is to have a live event like this where we come together um, live. And then on the following uh, week, we're going to have an online uh, act activity. Yeah. The third week, mm -hmm. yeah, the third week. So uh, we'll alternate weeks between live and virtual, live and virtual. So that's the idea. And of course, we're using, as uh, Anisha shared with you, The Confident Woman by Joyce Meyer as the basis for our discussions. Now, please excuse us if we get off track and start letting the Holy Spirit speak through us because sometimes that happens. And, you know, but we want to be flexible. We want God to do this thing. So, um, yeah. And um, what she what she's saying is when we say that we will um, have a that doesn't mean even on the live ones we'll still broadcast yeah. on these social media handles or platforms. But what we're saying is live is we're giving people opportunity to join us in in person, in person. as well. Yeah. On the first uh, Saturday of the month, and then the third Saturday of the month, it'll be strictly live broad streaming. Exactly. So, um, just. That. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully we didn't confuse anybody. And, you know, do, we just want to make this open to everyone. We don't want anyone to be restricted by the fact that you don't live in Oklahoma City or the fact that you don't have a car or whatever. We want you to be blessed by this uh, material because we know it's going to change lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I guess do we want to go ahead and jump right yeah, in. <laughs> and let me just say, can I just say really Sure. Quick? Well, I, you know, it's interesting how God does things. I just want to just say this really quickly. Uh, I was talking to Paula one time and I was saying, you know, God's been dealing with me about starting a women's group. And she's like, you know, God's been dealing with me about the same thing. And I was like, really? So, you know, we were just kind of like, oh, wow. You know, and so I started to plan um, just off of the, you know, again, confident, just being confident in God and just wanting to step out and do what he's called me to do. And so I started making plans, but just kind of like, okay, God, I'm going to be submitted. I'm going to be OB. I'm going to do this thing. I don't even know, you know, how it's going to be. But I started looking around for facilities and things like that. And God told me to call Paula. And, he, you know, so I called her and I said, first I left her, you know, her and I glide a lot. So I said, listen, I said, don't feel like this is pressure. But, I, you know, and I'm not one of those people that says, well, God told me, you know, I wanted, I wanted to make sure that's something that she heard as well. So I told her, you know, what I was thinking. She's like, oh, my God, you know, like, I already have the facility and da, 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 da. And just so you know how this came about, um, it really is a God thing. It's really something that we are um, submitting our lives to God to do. We're not you know, paying anybody. I mean, we're not charging people to come. It's just something that we wanted to sow and just be obedient to what God is um, instructing us to do. And so I pray, and I know that Paula feels the same way, that what we're doing blesses you. Yeah. Um, we're, we really are. This really is an act of obedience yeah. for me and for Paula. Absolutely. And I'm just excited to be able to have a friend and somebody that I know um, who is a woman of integrity, who loves God, um, to be able to do this project with. So I'm really, really excited. I look forward to just seeing what God's going to do with it. Absolutely. And I know the one thing about these um, types of events, even though you're the one putting it on, God usually has a major, major breakthrough for you right. as well. So I know we're going to be blessed yes. just in our obedience, but I am excited about all of my sisters and brothers that are joining us that your lives are going to be changed too. Because confidence is something that we all need, especially these days. Yes. There's so much going on. And I don't know about you, Anisha, but isn't there just a lot of noise it around? Mm -hmm. There's just, I mean, you got television, uh, radio, media, social, social media, media. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you're seeing all these things that are happening around you. It's just, it becomes noise. Right. And the one thing that God had me to do in preparation for this today was to fast from radio this mm -hmm. week because I love music. I don't know if y'all know, but <laughs> if you follow me on social media, I love music. I am a music girl. So I, you know, I get into it and I put my whole self, sometimes I'm in my car acting a fool because I got the music <laughs> on and, and it's not always gospel. Yeah, let me just say that so, but uh, so he had me fast from radio this week just so he could download some things into me to pour into you and so that to me is just that's where I'm at and I feel the same heartbeat with Anisha yeah. like we're doing this because simply out of obedience it's not a fact of we're charging people to do this I know Bible study groups that do charge you know their participants to come in and be a part of it but we want to sow into you because we understand that God has given us some amazing experiences in our lives and we want to take those experiences and, and share them with you yes. and share the word with you as well so we're gonna jump right into the confident woman okay um, the one thing that uh, Joyce always does Joyce Meyer is the, the author she always has like an introduction in her book mm -hmm. and I'm always the kind of person like I want to get right to the meat and potatoes <laughs> like I don't really 
it's great that you have an introduction, but I want to hear what the content of your book has to say. And let me just say, um, I don't know if you know Joyce's story, but she's gone through sexual abuse in her childhood and all kinds of things. And I related to her story. And so for her to be have a worldwide international ministry, this is the person you need to hear from right. because you don't do that with the kind of past that she's had. Yes. You know, so the confident woman, she breaks down what is confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, what, if you had to define confidence, what would you say confidence is to you? Okay. So just to simply define confidence just off of no dictionary, just my total thinking, I think confidence is being aware of who God made you and being comfortable with who you are. Um, and, and not necessarily, that doesn't mean that you won't ever have moments where you feel fearful or insecure. That just means that in everything that you are, you're simply okay with it. Not only are you okay with it, but you're open to whatever um, God wants to do in your life. You're open to new ideas. You're, you're just open. Yeah. Um, and you're not afraid of what other people are going to think about you for being open to what God has given you to do. <laughs> so that's just my... Yeah, I laughed when she said, not afraid of what other people, because I struggle with that, even still. Uh, but God is, is bringing me out of that. But one thing that I know is that when you get your eyes on people yes. and you start to get them off of God, it's just like Peter when he was walking on the mm -hmm. water. As long as he was looking at Jesus, he was in. He's yeah. walking on water. He's doing the impossible. But the minute that he took his eyes off Jesus, he right. started to sink. And then he cried out, of course, to, to Jesus and he saved him. But that's how we are. You yeah. know, I think sometimes we step out into the deep and we do these things thinking, okay, well, God got, you know, he got this, you know. And then we start going, oh, but wait a right. minute. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough education. I don't have enough, you know, whatever. I'm, too, I'm overweight. So what are people going to think? Or just whatever right. the case may be. And then it just turns into a whole, like, it's not working anymore. Right. Because you've taken your eyes off the source, and now you're looking at self. Yes. yes. So, and I think Joyce makes that point in her book. What about you, Paula? Confidence. Um, confidence, yeah. Go ahead and ask me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> my definition of confidence has evolved. It's evolved over time. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to think confidence was all about me and believe, believe in yourself, and mm -hmm. you can do anything. But as little kids, we know we can't do anything. Right. <laughs> we right. can do we can do the things that God has gifted us with. And I think that's what confidence is. Knowing what God has gifted you with yes. and really having a clear understanding of how that fits into his purpose for your life mm -hmm. and walking in that. That's what confidence is to me. Yes. Absolutely. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. So um you know, I had some discussion notes. I had on um the second paragraph in the book. It says, confident people do not concentrate on their weaknesses. They develop and maximize their strengths. And that spoke to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, so you mean confident people actually do have weaknesses? Yes. That's what she's saying. It's not like they don't have, they dominate in every area. Right. They have certain areas they're strong in, and they focus on those areas, and they don't even worry about the weakness, mm -hmm. you know, the stuff that they're weak in. Right. And um, one of the things that she, she mentioned here, she said confident people are not afraid to fail or make mistakes. And I think that's so important because sometimes I think most of us, we don't do what we feel an unction to do because we're afraid of failure. And I have to admit to you, and I'm not even trying to like toot my horn or anything, but as I was reading this, I was realizing God has really built a strong confidence on the inside of me. A lot of the qualities that she was reading and saying that was confident, I was like, oh my God. And I didn't even <laughs> realize it. But I know it's something that God has done in me. And I can honestly say, it's probably only been the last two years. I actually had somebody interview me um, this week, and she was talking about the things she's seen me do. And she was saying, you seem so fearless. And it just really made me realize, because in my own self, my own thinking, I don't think that way. I just think I'm doing whatever God tells me to do. Right. And I'm not thinking about what people think about it, or yeah. if people think it's great, or if they don't, I go, oh, what's she doing? I don't like that. <laughs> I'm just being obedient to God. And so... Yeah. As I was reading this, I was realizing God has done a deep work in me because I used to care what people thought about me. I really did. Um, but when you talked about the strength, the strength, um, the uh, confident people, they, they develop their strengths. They don't look at their weaknesses. And I was thinking about, I don't know if you've taken um, the Strength Finders I have. with Rhonda Boyle. Yeah. I don't know if she's going to be on here. If you are, Rhonda, strength we're shouting you out. Strength Finders. Yeah. Um, I love that class because one of the things that she talks about is... Um, um, uh, maximizing your your strengths and not looking at your weaknesses and so many times you know I remember growing up I was told I talked a lot you know and I didn't who knew that I was called to speak I just knew I liked to talk and it was fun for me um, but you tend to find as you grow older that some of the things or more mature <laughs> some of the things that um, we, we that people will make us feel like is a weakness right 
that it actually is a strength. And so one of the things that, that um, Joyce Meyer uh, emphasizes in here is to build on your strengths. Don't look so much at your weaknesses. We all have them. Right. And I'll give this one example really quick and I'll go back to Paula. But she gave an example in the book where she was saying, what if um, I wanted to play the piano? And she said, I could. I, that's not my natural gift. But I could have, learn how to play the sure. piano. I could probably get to a five on a scale of one to ten. But speaking is her natural gift. So if she's at an eight, why not hone that gift? Yeah. And don't so much look at, you know, trying to be great at the piano. If you want to play the piano for fun, great. But don't make it something that you focus on and beat yourself up because you can't play the piano. Because yeah. frankly, Willie, that's what, like, was it Frank Sinatra yeah. or Alicia Keys or something? Yeah, exactly. Right? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a perfect example of staying in your lane, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. knowing where you function best and staying in your lane. I know that, you know, I'm not a coach. Mm -hmm. I, that's just not my strength. I'm not very organized. <laughs> I'm very seat of the pants kind of person. I just, you know, and, and my personality tends toward empathy a lot. Mm -hmm. So that gift lends itself to a different type of profession or a different mm -hmm. type of location. So I know not to go into that field. I'll leave that to, you know, Miss Anisha mm -hmm. or, you know, April Franks Hunt, you know, some of those other people because they do it so well. So, but I don't beat myself up for that. Yeah. I, you know, oh gosh, why come you can't be a coach like they are? What I feel like that God has called me to, I'm confident in that. I feel very strongly about the things that he has gifted me with. You know, as a graphic designer, I pat myself on the back all day, every day about, you know, the things that I do. Not bragging, but just saying, wow, look right. what God can do through me, That's through good. the gifts that I have. And so I think that is what true confidence is. And she said something that was really profound in this third paragraph here on the, in this first chapter. She said, the world is not hungry for mediocrity. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's good. Like, the, we don't need any more mediocre people. Right. I mean, just honestly. Yeah. Because 99.9% .9 of the world is living their life in mediocrity. So what are we going to do with the gifts and callings that God has placed within us using that confidence, using that firm foundation of confidence that he's placed within us to change the world? You know, that's what he called us to be as world changers. Right. right. And, you know, for some people, hearing the word world changer may sound big and in in some ways it is but what i want to encourage you with is the fact that there is a sphere of influence that you have that is a part of the world so don't look at a big chunk like oh my god i have to change the world that's too big <laughs> look at yours what is the sphere of influence that you have that god is calling you to change or you to impact um and focus more on that and not just on oh this is a huge assignment um and uh okay i'm sorry <laughs> Um, and so to skip over, um, because, you know, we only have a certain amount of time, but I really wanted to um, go into this next point, too, uh, on page five in the first chapter. She talks about God requires us to approach him in faith and, you know, the deeply held confidence. This, this is her definition. The deeply held confidence that God is trustworthy and will always make good on his promises. Yes. And when I'm speaking, I tell women this. God's checks always cash. Always. Like He's that. never going to write you a bad check. You're never going to be like, well, God, you promised me this, but it didn't happen. Right. When we trust God, like this, this thing that we're doing today, I'm just going to tell you, I really, really struggle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really struggle. Well, God, is this you or is it not? Well, should we do it or should we not? Mm -hmm. Well, what should the content be, God? Well, I mean, we went back and forth for like two weeks about this. And finally, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to drop all of my expectations and trust God yes, about this. Yes. I don't care if we get a crowd there. I don't care if one person shows up. If we impact someone's life, right. I will feel as though I have done what I'm supposed to do. Right. And to me, that's confidence. You're not placing your confidence necessary in the fact that you have all the answers. You're trusting that God will download those things as you begin to step out in obedience. Right. And I, I want to add there, I love that Paula said that. I want to add there that sometimes we can get caught up in thinking, um, even on, even on small scales, um, that something is about us, or that you know people are looking for us to produce something. Or and the truth of the matter is, you know, I got a call the other day um, to speak at a networking event, and uh, and and I began to think, okay, God, I mean, because I, I definitely, I'm an inspirational speaker. I love imparting. I love inspiring. Yes, God has called me to business, but sometimes I don't look at that as much. So I was like, okay, God, okay, I'm inspirational, but I'm going to speak at a business event. <laughs> So it's like, okay, God, what do you have me to say? And the moment I began to ask him, he began to fill up my paper with things to say. And one of the things he told me is he said, people are not calling you because of you. People are calling you for what I put on the inside of you. Wow. So what you have to remember is when you, when God has given you something to do, don't look at your 
yourself because the moment that you look at yourself, it will cause you to begin to put back in the drawer yeah. what God wants you to put out and give to the world. Yeah. So don't look at yourself. Don't in ourselves, like in myself, I, nobody wants to hear me. I, I can talk about fun stuff. But I don't have anything, you know, wise to say. You know what I'm saying? But I think when I let, well, I'm just saying, <laughs> when I let God really speak through me, people think I'm somebody that I'm not. You know, when I was listening to this lady, I had two people interview me last week. Um, and I was like, I'm like, people want to interview me? What's that about? But, you know, but I was thinking to myself, I don't have anything to say. But then, you know, they don't want to hear from me. They want to hear from what God's put on the inside of me. And so I love that God makes us look like somebody that in ourselves we don't even feel like we are. Because I don't even think I'm worthy of any interview. I'm like, it's just me. I'm just Anisha, whatever. But God makes us, when we're, when we're walking in what he's called us to, and we're confident in God, he makes us look a certain way that in ourselves we're like, I'm not that girl. But, you know, yeah, but God yeah. has done the work in us. So, okay. so rest in him and don't so much focus on it just being about you being perfect. Because the truth of the matter is perfect does not it does exist. Not exist. Mm-hmm. It's an unrealistic expectation. Yeah. I'll, I fumble over my words. I talk fast sometimes. But for whatever reason, God has still allowed people to enjoy it. And that's okay. You know what I'm saying? I realize it's okay just to simply be you. And the truth of the matter is, what being you is where the real gift is because you're being authentically who God created you to be. And that is true confidence. Exactly. I love that you talk with your hands. I do all the time. I'm like, (laughs) she's a hand talker. I love that. And when I'm up speaking, I talk with my hands too. For whatever reason, sitting grounds me, so I don't talk with them as much, but. and I know you're probably familiar with this it says for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength and truly that is the that is the truest statement ever you know you can do all things that he has placed within you because of his strength it's not the person sitting here today is not sitting here in her own strength yes. I prayed every day leading yes. up to this event I prayed fervently because yes. I was like God you're going to have to put that inside of me that you want me to pour out because if you don't I'm I'm not going to have anything, God. Right. I mean, I, I just, I'm not that clever. Mm-hmm. I really am not. Um, and, and I don't really like to hear myself talk. I know people who like to hear themselves talk just for the sake of it. <laughs> I'm not one of those people. I tend to be kind of quiet and introverted. And people think I'm not because I'm in the public eye. But truly, I'm an introvert. So I could go pretty much all day without saying a whole lot. But the fact that he gives me a message to speak, is, I, you know, I honor that. I honor the gift that he's placed within me. And I never take it for granted if someone asks me to share from my heart because I'm going to give them what God has given me every right. time. So Absolutely. it's beautiful. But I can do all things through Christ. If you don't get anything else from this broadcast, take that scripture, Philippians 4.13. Plaster it on your bathroom wall, your in your bedroom, at work, on your computer yes. monitor. Put it in your car. Because truly, you can't, if you're struggling in an area, right now and I know that's a lot of people out there and you're saying God I want to step out and do something for you but I'm scared I don't have the confidence that it takes I don't think I'm where I need to be right now to to go out and minister or do what you call me to do or even if it's just you know some people think everything has to be huge right like you have to have this worldwide platform you know whatever to do to do great things for God no if you work in a daycare Mm -hmm. and you're holding babies all day That is a ministry. Yes. That child is going to grow up to become God knows what one day. He's going to become the president or he's going to become a CEO of a company because you nurtured that child while they were. I think you have to restart your video. Yeah, I'm going to restart my video and then I'm going to come back to the set. But I'll let Anisha take over from here. So she has to go start over there on Facebook. I guess I'll give you like 30 minutes to talk. But one of the things I like when we talked about um, confidence and we were talking about being authentically you, one of the things that Joyce points out in her in her um, book is she says confident it's confidence is fuel and it allows you to be authentically who you are. Um, as a result, you get to fill yourself up with confidence. I'm sorry. As a result, you fill yourself up with God and confidence comes out. So as you fill yourself up more with God, you're able to connect with confidence. And so I want to just give you that point. One of the other things I wanted to share with you is. Um, she said that fear is an emotional virus. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, you know, a lot of times we, the main reason that most of us never live out the totality of what we're called to do is because of fear. And when you think about a virus, not only does it make you sick, but it spreads, right? So when you let fear come into any area of your life, um, emotionally, it, it, it actually depletes your emotions, not just um, in what you're wanting to do, but it'll spread to other areas of your life. So I love that she called it an emotional virus. I thought that was a really uh, good point. And uh, one other thing I'll add, when uh, Paula was talking about people pleasing, one of the things that she said here 
is she said people pleasing is a result of fear. And some of us, we kind of think that's a noble thing. Well, I like, I want people to be happy with me. I want people to like what I do. But I want you to understand that people pleasing is a result of fear. So we have to be so careful not to let fear become a root of anything that we're doing. Because if we do, now I'm not saying you're not going to do, you're not going to have a moment where you feel fear. Um, anything you do great, you're going to feel some fear. Exactly. You should anyway, because you want, to me, I think when I know I'm afraid, I know I have to rely on God even more. Mm -hmm. So you, it's okay to feel a healthy amount of fear, but you don't want fear that stunts you. Right. You want to use fear to propel you and push you and to connect with God to fill you up mm -hmm. so that you can pour out. Right. Fear, Because fear can paralyze you. Yes. It can cause you to just stand still and not do anything. Right. And I've been in that place in my life. I, I've been in that place recently where, you know, we were living in a certain area and we got comfortable there. And we could literally, my husband and I every day could not sleep for about three months because God was tugging on us. Mm. It's time to move. Wow. It's time to go. It's time. But we had gotten so comfortable in that place that we were being disobedient. Mm. And I mean, it wasn't even a, like a, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It wasn't a nice place. It was a place that we knew, okay, our season up here is over. But we allowed fear to paralyze us. And finally one day, my husband said, you know what? I'm going to go find our new place to live. And I said, well, great. Go do that. <laughs> and he came back to me and he said, I found a place. And if you're okay with it, I'm ready to go. Do you realize that I said yes to the place? Hadn't seen it, hadn't looked at it. Now, most people wouldn't do this. Right. I hadn't even seen the place first. <laughs> and I just said yes. Because I trust the God in him yes, to take good. us to a place where we need to be. And do you realize that the manager over that place is a Christian woman. She walks the property every day and wow. prays over that whole wow. property. And she is a mighty woman of God. So I know that that was God that produced that yeah. result. But wow. had I been, you know, fearful and just like, oh, I don't know. And, and another thing, control is a different mm -hmm. form of fear. Mm -hmm. When you feel like you have to control every element of everything, that is actually fear in operation. So I could have tried to say, well, no, I have to see it first. And no, I have to go check it out before I say yes. And I could have done all that. But I just simply said yes. Because I wasn't actually saying yes to my husband. I was saying yes to God. Mm -hmm. He was saying it's time to go. Now, see, that'll even preach in itself on a marriage trip. I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah. You know, ladies, sometimes, I don't want to say this, but sometimes um, in marriage, it's easy for us to look at the man and our husbands and not the God in them. So that's a really, that's a really great point. I'm glad you, you uh, mentioned that. Yeah, wow. absolutely. I always try to share from my personal experience because I really feel like somebody else may be dealing with that. Right. And, you know, that's not to say, you know, you don't go check out your, right, right, <laughs> your right. home before you move yeah. into it or whatever. But I'm just saying in this particular case, you know, it was past time. Right. And so I just did what I felt like God was saying. There was a paragraph on page eight mm -hmm. that said, sadly, when we try to be something or someone we're not intended to be, we stifle ourselves. <laughs> Come on, the exact. I was going to say that. Know, right? <laughs> and God's power in us. When we have confidence, we can reach truly amazing heights without confidence. Even simple accomplishments are beyond our grasp. And the point I got from that was there are a lot of pretenders out there. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people pretending to be something that they're not. Um, you know, what, we all know social media makes it very easy to be something that you're not. Right. You can blow your life up and just be on, you know, on point every day, happy every day, right. marriage on point, kids right. on point. But we realize that's just not real life. Yeah. You know, I try to be pretty transparent, yeah, even on my social media mm -hmm. channels, because I want people to know I'm human. Right. I have struggles just like everyone else. Absolutely. But I do post a lot of positive, yes, yes. just because I feel like there's a lot of negative out there in the world that I don't really care to see. Right. But what I'm saying is, pretending to be something that you're not keeps you in a state of fear, uh, in a state of disobedience, mm -hmm. and in a stuck place. Right. Because you don't know what the next move is for that fake person that you've created. Right, right. It's not reality. It's not. Know? And I, it's so interesting that she was, because that was the exact point I was looking at. So I love that. I love when the Holy Spirit just does things like that just to let us know that he's in this. You yeah. know what I mean? So right. I love that. I was literally looking at those exact words when she said that. Um, but one of the things, um, it does say we stifle God's power when we try to be something that we're not. And I looked at that as, I remember it like in my early 20s, and it wasn't that I was trying to be something that I wasn't. I was wanting to please people. I was wanting people to be happy with who I was. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize me trying to make people happy with me, um, it stifled who I was. It dimmed my light. I wasn't able to be who God wanted me to be. And this is what the Holy Spirit gave me this morning when I woke up. And it was um, in, in conjunction with this particular uh, uh, phrase. It says, we are the facilitators of God's greatness. We have, the light, we have a light that he wants us to shine. 
And if we never allow our confidence to arise, we stunt our growth. Wow. We delay ourselves. We, never, we may never actualize our full potential or our life or our purpose. So I want, I want to reiterate that. Whenever we look at um, who God has made us and whenever we're afraid to just step out on the water, you know, we're talking about Peter. Whenever we're afraid to just step out on the water, we're stunning ourselves. We're stunning God's greatness. And the light that we were intended to shine is never going to be seen. Yeah. Um, so I want you to be very clear that sometimes people think just because, you know, if you have a public platform, if you're called to be, you know, Kyle and I are public, uh, have, we're public people, that's not always the, you don't always have to focus on whether you have a light just because you're a public person or not. Wherever you are, there's somebody looking to you. There's somebody watching you. You are somebody's um, hero. Yeah. Somebody, you've done something that's made somebody want to know more about you. You have your own responsibility for your own life that people are watching. So don't don't think of it as, well, you know, no, I'm, not, I'm not a speaker. I'm not a minister. Right. I don't right. write, but whatever. That's not what we're saying. I'm saying that wherever you are right now in this very moment, you may be called to be a janitor, you may be called to be a pilot, or um, you know, you may be called to be whatever you're called to do. Maybe you're called to work on a business um, that's not a public business. Whatever you're called to do, I'm saying that right where you are right now, you have a light. And if you can't allow God to reveal that in you, to get out of self so much, because really a lack of confidence is really selfish. Mm -hmm. um, whenever we, because we're focusing on ourselves. Do you know what I'm saying? So I want, I want, I want to be clear. Sometimes we think when we're doing certain ways that it's, um, it's humble. Yeah, it's humble, and it's really not. It's really focusing so much on yourself that you don't allow the gift that God put on the inside of you. See, a part of why I live the way I do is because I have a responsibility to Him. Yes. He gave me this life, and so I want to submit my whole entire life to Him and do exactly what He wants me to do, in hopes that He's pleased with right. me. Right. Really, that's exactly. just the honest truth. Exactly. And so, I just yeah. going to add that there. Yeah. yeah. At, at the end of, of my life, when I'm standing before God and, you know, he's running down all the things mm -hmm. that I, you know, have done, I want him to say that, you know, I did a good job. Yes. I want him to say he's proud of me. I yes. want him to say that he's pleased with what I put out. Yes. I don't want, you know, him to throw everything in the fire and it all burns up and then there's nothing left. And, you know, there used to be an old song that they sang in, in the church, only what you do for Christ will last. Yeah. And I believe that. O only the things, and let me just say, everything that we do for Christ isn't super spiritual. Right. Sometimes just having an even temper is, yeah. is spiritual. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes just putting your cart back at the grocery store right. where it belongs is spiritual. You know why? Because people are looking at you. Right. You may have a, like Joy says, you got a Jesus pin and a bumper sticker that says, I love Jesus and this big Bible, but you're doing small things that, you know, cause people to kind of wonder, well, is she really a Christian? Right. You know, and none of us are perfect. We all miss the mark from time to time. But what I'm saying is that everything our lives are worship to God. That's right. Our, everything we do is worship. And so, therefore, don't look at it as, oh, well, going to church is spiritual, but, you know, uh, speaking a kind word to someone is not. It's all, yes, ma'am. <laughs> we had someone join us. <laughs> it's all spiritual if we're children of God. So, thank you for sharing your heart, uh, Anisha. I love when she starts to flow because God really starts to move through her. And I just love how her passion. You know, you can, when I, when I hear her speak about, you know, this is why I live the life I live, it's passion. It's why she goes and speaks. It's why she writes the books. You know, what are you on your third book now? Okay, excuse me. This <laughs> author is on her fourth book now, you know, and, and, it's, and it's why she's the person that she is and why we're friends because I want to be linked, or I want to link arms with someone who, A, loves God with all their heart. And, and strives to be that person that God wants them to be. And then, too, I want someone who's passionate about it because I share that same passion, you know. And so I just appreciate that about her. And, you know, there are so many of you out there that feel like, well, you know, I'm just a housewife or I'm just I'm just raising my kids and going to work every day or, you know, I'm just a wife. I don't, I don't really do anything extraordinary. Everything that you do is worship unto God. Your life is worship unto God. And, you know, utilize that with confidence knowing that, he, he started something in you, and he's going to finish it before you leave this planet. And he wants, and you want him to say, well, well done. done. Well done at the end. You know, yes. you, you want to have a, a good report. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. So um, I wanted to um, add right here where she, one of the things that she said, um, she said, ordinary people feel fear when accomplishing extraordinary things. They just push past the fear. 
So we need to be care mindful of that. Um, when we're doing whatever God is telling us to do, I love that you brought up a housewife. I love that you brought up um, simple things because sometimes we think that only the only things that are holy are these big things. Right. You know, do you tip your waitress right? You know what I'm saying? Did you oh. did you leave did you leave the, right. did you leave church on Sunday? Go down to Golden Corral, act a fool, and then say, "I came from church," and give them a two dollar tip. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just really, you <laughs> just know, on the practical just ordinary level. stuff. Sometimes yeah. we have to make everything so big, um, and there's some things are just ordinary. Right. But I want to say, um, one of the things that she said is that ordinary people feel fear when we're accomplishing big things. We feel fear all the time when God's having me do stuff. I'm constantly asking God. The last workshop I did for authors. Um, you know, we all know when you're putting on events, it's just one of those things that can be kind of slow. Yeah. And then you show up and all these people are here. And you're like, oh my God, they're <laughs> big. They all pay, you know. But in, uh, in the process, it can be so um, frustrating. And I remember telling God, oh my God, I just don't want to do this anymore. I, I just really don't. But I remember thinking, um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, I always ask God, I'm always like, God, why am I doing this? I really ask Him that because there's fear. But then I have to push past the fear. And so a lot of times what I do is I just put stuff out there because I can't take it back. Can't like once you start telling exactly. people, well, you know I'm going to do this. It's like, well, I got to <laughs> I gotta keep my word. Yes. I want to challenge you with that, yes. that whenever you feel like God's telling you to do something, tell somebody. Yes. Because as you start to tell somebody, it awakens that confidence and that God confidence in you that now I've got to get this thing done. Yes. You know, yes. I can't just say I'm going to do something and then, and then abandon it. <laughs> Right, real right. talk, real talk. My my devotional, the Capturing Crown mm -hmm. devotional, it was written because of what she's saying. Because I put it out there to everybody and said, hey guys, I'm writing this yeah. devotional. It's coming out in XYZ month. And so because I had put that out there, it was like, okay, now you have to fulfill your promise. So I had to get busy writing and make it happen. Right. And, you know, I would have written it anyway, but it probably would have taken me much longer. Yeah. I would have procrastinated because of just, you know, fear and different things. Oh, I don't know what people are going to say. But you know what? It's out and people are being blessed by it. And, you know, to me, anytime you're doing anything, large or small, give yourself that accountability. Mm -hmm. Put it out there to someone else. If you're trying to change your eating habits, if you're trying to exercise, you want to quit smoking, yes. whatever it is, Put it out there to people and let them know, hey, guys, this is what I'm getting ready to do. I guarantee you somebody's going to call you on it and say, hey, how are you doing with your right. diet? How are you doing with your exercise? How's yeah. quitting smoking coming? Are you, right. you know, so that's the key. Right. And the good thing about this group, people, we, we really encourage you um, as we do the live events, do, don't just think because you can watch us on stream that you should not come out. Because eventually, we're going to be having accountability groups, and we want to be that accountability for you. Um, one of the things I was sharing with Paula is I think it's so important um, that we have people that can pull out our greatness. And that's what I hope, and I know Paula hopes yeah. to be to be somebody that is like a midwife, to help you pull out yeah. what you know is there, to help you be accountable for whatever you said you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be doing that here. If you're in Oklahoma City, we definitely want you to begin to come out on these first Saturdays of the month, share, share your time with us. and. And so into yourself. Yeah. I know that we're busy, we're mothers, we're wives, we're doing all I mean, literally, I had several things that I do before I came. I had my son had a birthday party to go to, my other son needed me to take him to Target to get some stuff for his project. You know, I mean there was things that I, I had a funeral. But <laughs> I mean life doesn't stop. And that's oh, I want to add that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes that we think that because God has called us to do something, that life stops. Yes. And we start doing something and then you know, we have an attack or the enemy comes against our purpose and we're like, oh, wait a minute. I know this. Okay, never mind. I'm not going to do this anymore. Right. I want you to understand that life does not stop. Exactly. I cannot tell you how many things I have to go through on a constant basis to get from A to C yes. or F or G or H or wherever. I, I, there's so many hurdles when you're in purpose and even more yes. when, you're, when you're in your calling. Because here's the thing you have to understand. The devil corrupted his own purpose. Many of you, I don't know if you probably know this, but he was an archangel. Yes. One of the highest angels the Bible or history says he was one of the most beautiful angels. And music, he was the minister of music. So music came through his being. That was who he was in heaven. Could you imagine being that type of being? Clearly, you're definitely close to God. And then to corrupt your purpose, why would you not spend your time making sure everybody else aborts their, their purpose as well? So I want you to understand that the moment that you really get focused, Distractions are going to come they are. and attacks are going to come. Yes. But that should not stop you. That should give you that tenacity. And uh, one of the things she talks about, perseverance and tenacity to keep going, even in the face of those things that happen. Mm -hmm. And one thing with women, uh, one thing we have to be particularly careful about is our emotions. Mm. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> our emotions. When we're, when we're walking in purpose, our emotions are going to try to get us in places that we don't need to be. Mm -hmm. Self-pity, right. doubt, yes. fear, um, you know, just not thinking we're worthy. 
And so we have to really be on guard with our emotions. And particularly when people come against us and say, oh, why are you doing that? Or I don't understand, how could you get off into that? Or whatever the case may be. Or they're just not being supportive. They won't show up for your stuff. They won't buy your book. You know what? All of that doesn't matter. Doesn't. What truly matters is your obedience. Because at the end of obedience comes reward. Woo. That's, now that <laughs> at the end of yeah. obedience comes reward. You don't get the reward ahead of time and then get to be obedient. Right. You do the thing first and then God rewards you based upon your obedience. It's just like your child. You don't tell them, oh, go in there and wash the dishes. But And then they say, well, give me my money first and then I'll go wash the dishes. Right. That's not how that works. Right. That's not how any of this works. Right. Okay. <laughs> It's just not. So with, with us as women, we really have to, my point was, just be on guard about your emotions. When you're walking in your purpose and calling, that's one area the enemy's really going to yeah. attack you in. Right. I, I can remember times where I would literally just be laid out crying before God. But I was, I was giving him that emotion because I needed him to fill me up with strength. Right. So I want to encourage you with that. Sometimes I don't care if you have to get on the floor and cry out to God. And, you know, the Bible says he's near to those who are broken heart and those who are crushed in spirit. So when you have those moments and you have those, um, God, why me? Or I don't understand or whatever that feeling is on the inside of you, lay before God and let him fill you up with strength yeah. as you weep and cry and let him do whatever he needs to do in you so you can keep going because life is real. Yeah. Stuff is going to happen, but that doesn't give you an excuse or a right to quit on yourself. Yeah. And so the scripture that I would give you to go with that mm -hmm. is they that wait upon the mm -hmm. Lord shall renew their strength. So you got to wait on him first and then allow him to strengthen you. Yeah. They shall mount up with wings, which means you're going to take off. You're going to soar. You're going to do wonderful, amazing things as you wait on him and he gives you the strength. They shall run and not be weary. You're going to be able to do more, go further, accomplish more. They shall walk and not faint. That's the scripture I want to give you for that analogy that Anisha was sharing with you. Because truly, we need that strength. Mm -hmm. We are not, and let me just say something about the superwoman syndrome, because I see this all the time, especially in ministry. You cannot go, 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 do, 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 and pour into everybody else and not fill yourself up. Yes. That's like driving your car to the ends of the earth and never putting gas in it. And God, the Holy Spirit is our fuel. Yeah. He gives us what we need to continue this journey. If you are trying to accomplish something, if you're trying to get something done and you think you're just going to muster up all your strength and you're going to do this thing in, on your own, trust me, it's not going to last very long. Yeah. Your strength is going to run out. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> I want to share this one um, tip with you. Um, and it's talking about rejecting. It's one of the things that she said is, um, she said fear is rejecting yourself. And I just thought, man, that is really deep. And so this is what I want to put up in here and say this. I wrote this down, I want to share this with you. It, said, um, it says, you being is always, okay, here it is, okay, I know this. <laughs> so you being who you are is always commanding something, right? And so in essence, what you receive in life is what you're being. So what do I mean by that? What is compromised of what what is compromised of what you've said and okay. Y'all, my writing is horrible on here. I wrote this in my phone. So I'm gonna go back and do this again. So one of the things that she said is when you walk in fear, you're rejecting yourself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we we feel like some of us battle rejection. Some of us maybe um are fathers weren't around, maybe our mothers weren't present, whatever the case, maybe our boyfriends broke up with us and we held on to that right. forever. Right. Maybe our husband walked out on us, whatever the case may be, because of that, you start to make yourself feel like everybody's going to reject you. Mm -hmm. But what in essence is happening is that you're rejecting yourself. You are presenting an image and I want you to understand that your spirit gives off an aura. It gives off something that everybody around you can pick up. Wow. Yeah, so when you are walking in a, in a spirit of rejection, you actually have a mirror that looks at you and then projects out wow. to you. Wow. So I want you to understand that when you're being, whatever you're being, it commands something. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so in essence, um, whatever you're receiving in your life, in this very moment, whatever you're experiencing, understand. So this is why, you know, Paula talked about me coaching people. I do, I coach, I mentor people, but here's the thing about me. If you're going to work with me, you have to be serious about change. Mm -hmm. Because I cannot sit with somebody and I'm telling you a path of what I see God giving me to give you, and then four months later you're still saying the same thing. You don't want change. And you're going to keep pulling into yourself whatever that feeling is you have on the inside of you. So until you let God fill your spirit up with confidence, until you let him cleanse your soul, 
you cannot you can only project and receive wow. what's on the inside of you wow. so it's so important that we allow to have have God give us God confidence so that we can project something that's healthy wow. otherwise everything you're going to pull into yourself is going to be unhealthy Ooh, okay so she just said a key word here <laughs> healthy mm -hmm. we have a lot of people in the body of Christ who are unhealthy yes and this is what I know that we cannot do in this hour the end time that we're living in right now. We can't afford to be unhealthy. Mm -hmm. An unhealthy body produces unhealthy fruit. Right. We're not gonna be able to disciple people. We're not going to be able to change any circumstance or get healed or delivered from anything until we ourselves are healthy. healthy. Right. And that means spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Because there are a lot of people walking around physically unhealthy because mm -hmm. they refuse to address mm -hmm. things going on within themselves. Mm -hmm. Emotions that are locked away because we, you know, we locked them back there in the vault because we don't want to deal with them. But they're making our bodies sick. Yeah. We've got an all against somebody. Let me just tell you an experience I had the other day. God led me to come home and sit in my, in my recliner and just be still. Mm -hmm. No TV, no radio, no social, nothing. Just sit in my recliner and be still. And I was playing some really quiet, soft worship music as I was sitting there. And he brought the image of a woman into my head that I haven't seen or heard from in years. And this is someone that I had an offense against. And God said, you need to forgive her. Mm. And at that moment, tears began to stream down my, eye, my face. And I realized God was delivering me from that unforgiveness wow. and causing me to deal with that because that was going to be a hindrance to my ministry. Yeah, wow. When you hold unforgiveness against someone, yeah. you cannot progress in the things of God. And I want to say this, a lot of the unhealthy behavior that we're seeing amongst women, it, even Christian women, yes. is coming from hurt, pain, mm -hmm. rejection, and unforgiveness. Yes. And you've got to deal with it. I'm sorry, there's no, you can't shortcut it. Well, I'm going to just cut them out of my life and we just ain't going to talk about No, 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 no. That's not good enough. Right. You've got to go to God with that thing. And you've got to deal with it. Not saying you got to let them back in your right. life or be around them all the time or y'all have to be best friends. That's right. not what I'm saying. But you and God need to do business about that. Yeah. Seriously. Right. And if you don't deal with it, it'll deal with you. It like what she was saying, you. it shows up in your health. Yeah. It shows up in, I had the word here, command and demand. And so you either command the best out of people or you command the nastiness. Sometimes you hear people that are like, you know what, people always gossip to me. People always tell me their business. People, there's something in you that is drawing mess out of people. Um, there's something unhealthy in you that is causing people to, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you have a to, to gravitate, to toward gravitate yeah. towards you. But when you, see, I don't get gossipy people as friends. They don't, they don't befriend me. They, they just don't, they don't stick. <laughs> they may start and they're like, wait a minute, she's not gonna partake in this right. conversation. Or I will say, well, girl, you know that ain't right. Or I'll say, and eventually they just kind of do one. like, I'm not their type of party. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So when you, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not. But whenever, you know, so understand that you, you're commanding and demanding something out of people. And I wanna, I wanna say this, I remember, um, I'll just say I remember having a season where there was unhealthy people in my life and I remember as God began to clean me up and he began to do a work in my heart slowly but surely people began to leave my life and I didn't understand it but I started to realize that those were people as you begin to go to another level as you begin to let God do things in you people are going to eventually slip off and you'll get to see who was meant to be attached or a part of your life and who was not. Um, and then you'll have people, they'll either clean up. Some people ended up cleaning up their app. They just got better yeah. because I got better. So as you get better, as you let God do the work in you, either the people around you will either get better because you're commanding and demanding something yeah. different yeah. or they're going to leave. Yeah. And, and don't be okay. afraid. Don't be afraid of that process. Right. Some people say, well, I'm just going to be by myself. You know, I'm not going to have any friends. <laughs> don't be afraid of that process because at that particular point when you are by yourself, right. that's when you and God get to get real tight. You get right. to get, you know, y'all's relationship will become much, you know, stronger and you begin to trust and rely on him even more. So he can download the things in you that he needs for that next season. Right. And I'm afraid of people who say I don't have any friends. I really am. <laughs> I'm serious because I think as women, I mean men too, but really as women, yeah. we were wired for relationships. Right. So when you're like, girl, I ain't got no friends. One that lets me know your thinking probably is a little bit off because we as ladies, we have to have somebody that tells us some. I mean, just a home real friend that's like, girl, that you know that. Right. 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 You need that because we are emotional creatures. And sometimes our emotions will veer us off somewhere that we don't need to go. And so when you have a real friend that's like, okay, now, Anisha, pull. And I'm serious. I need that. I'm not perfect. You know what I'm saying? And so when you say you don't have friends, number one, let's know there's something unhealthy on the inside of you. 
You know what I mean? Yes. And number two, it lets them know that maybe your thinking is, I'm a little afraid, maybe your thinking is a little bit off. Yeah. And so, or, or maybe there's been some wounding or rejection yeah. there that's not been dealt with. So right. you're afraid to you know, get into friendships with right. people. I had an incident like that where someone was really afraid of friendship and relationship. Mm -hmm. And so they ended up rejecting me as a result of that. And I still love this person, but they just weren't ready for that level of right. friendship. friendship. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I didn't mean to sound like that. Sound like yeah. okay. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Not at all. Um, Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Wow, we really got off into some right some, some aha moments there. So we kind of veered off of what we had written down, but that's all okay. I'm all about getting off script. Oh, this is another thing I like that. Um, one, I'll just share this point. Maybe I don't know how where we are on time, but um, one of the things I like that Joy said is she said sometimes we don't do things. Um, that we know we're supposed to do because um, we don't feel like we're loved unconditionally. And so some of you who are here now, and even some of you, 555, okay. Um, so some of you, thank you for the time. <laughs> like, yes, 555, okay, so we're gonna be ending soon. But I wanna just um, add this, you know, sometimes we feel like we, we don't have somebody who can love us unconditionally through our process of healing or through a hold our hand as we're going to where God's calling us to do. Some of us, you may not have that, but I wanna encourage you that you may not have that in human form, but you have that in God form. So if, a, if another human being never tells you how amazing you are, or they never tell you how great you are, or they never wanna walk you through a season of really being hurt and wanting to be healed, or if, they, if you never have somebody says, you know what, I'm gonna undergird you as you write that book. I'm gonna be your accountability partner as you go out and speak. I, I went with Paula one time to Tulsa to simply be a help to her as a friend. Um, if you don't have that, that is so okay. God will send you that person. If you start to believe God for that, but even in, in that instance, you don't want to ever make a person something that only God can be yes. for you. So I want you to be mindful that if you don't have that, understand that you have a God they love in God. And there is nothing that you cannot do as long as God is with you and God is holding your hand. And a lot of us want, you know, we want a, someone in flesh form. Right. I mean, that's just the human human yeah. nature in us. You know, we want that person, that human being. So we say, well, you know, yeah, I, you know, I love God and I know he's there and everything. But, you know, what about a human being person? There's going to be seasons in your life where he will trim away all yes. those people, especially as he begins to mature you and grow you up because he wants his your sufficiency to be in him and him alone. Period. Point blank. And you'll never know that until you go through that process. You'll never know what that feels like until you have everything stripped away from you. I remember standing in my living room one time and saying, God, if I lose everything that I have, to include my children, my husband, if I have a Job experience, God, and you're all I have, you're enough. Yeah, and you know what he said to me at that moment? That's what I wanted to hear. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he knew I meant it from my heart because I was fed up at that point. I had, I would, my marriage was going south and I, you know, things were happening with my kids and it just was a messy time in my life. But I had to come to a point of surrender mm -hmm. and complete and total surrender to God. And to me, that's where the confidence really started yeah. to come in because now I'm empty so he can fill me up with his confidence. So that's, really that's what I love that's about really God. Good. Well, I have some more points, but I'm thinking that we probably have to, um, yeah, we got a couple more minutes. Yeah. And I think my Facebook, I think my Facebook stream has ended and I really hate that I did get to say goodbye. I think to it's everybody. still on. You're still on. Is it still it goes off? Oh, still okay. on. I think you may like almost be off. Okay. Though. So we're about to wrap it up, everybody. But this has been really, really I mean, I I knew God was gonna show up and I knew he was gonna speak some things. I had some aha moments. Did you right. have I did, aha I moments? did, I did, I did. <laughs> Definitely. I did. And I just wanna to say to everyone that supporting this and watching, tell someone else that on the third Saturday of the month, of this month, we're gonna be back in the same place and time yes. and we're gonna be live streaming online for you. We hope that you go out and get the book, The Confident, Confident Woman, Woman by Joyce Meyer. You can find it at most major retailers, uh, Walmart, Mardell, uh, online at Amazon, but just make sure that you get it because you want to be a part of this discussion. Yes. And we want to ask, we want to answer questions next time too. Right. I, don't, I don't think we got the chance to do that. Yeah. So if you have questions, um, post them in the page, wherever you are. And we're going to come back through and look at those questions and answer those after the broadcast. Yes, today. yes, absolutely. And so thank you all for joining us. Um, I, oh gosh, I wish we had more time. I think I had so much. No, it was right. so many aha moments in the book. But I, I encourage you, like Paula said, to go out and get the book. 
um, and, and begin to, we can never get to a place where we should stop growing. Yes. Um, we should always be pushing ourselves and doing more to be fully, uh, full of who God calls us to be. So I want to encourage you with that. Thank you all for watching. I think Thank you. Facebook is about to go. Yes. Thank you all for watching. Those who are watching my Periscope. And uh, like she said, we'll be back uh, the third Saturday of the month. And then we'll be back again April, beginning of April. So join us. And if you're in Oklahoma City, come. We have some people here with us live event. now. So come live. Thank you people that showed up Thank you people that showed up. <laughs> um, and, and we're just looking to do whatever God wants us to do. And have God show up. So I thank God that he did exactly that yeah. today. So, all right, guys. Well, until next time. We're we'll out. see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>